So I know that's all a little bit uh, silly. What we have here is a gesture recognizer. And bear with me, it might actually be practical. So um, what I did is I'm using media pipe, which I've shown before, which uh, tracks our finger position. And um, with that, we can train a model on certain gestures, which is um, what Google already did for us. And then we can do things when a certain gesture is recognized. So if we go here, for example, um, you can see this is the documentation for, uh, for Google for that. Uh, you can actually try it yourself online as well. Um, you have different, that's me, you have different gestures like this that you can... All right, now it might actually not do anything <laughs> because I'm running multiple webs, uh, multiple webcams. But you can give that a try. So I'm using that in combination with our trusty Ableton OSC, a wonderful package that allows us to run certain actions inside Ableton. Uh, things with clips, um, we, can, we can do anything basically. Um, and we're using that in this case, like I use this live to actually do some very boring stuff. So um, as you can see, um, if I switch to the camera for my live set, or my the corner where I, <laughs> my my life corner, um, I have a, a monitor there, so I can see Ableton, but I don't really have a lot of control because I don't have a mouse there, and I don't want that there as well. Um, and I, there's just a couple of things sometimes I want to do in Ableton, which is mostly uh, switching views or opening the browser or stuff like this. So for that, I created this gesture thing. So it actually does very boring things. It runs via, via my iPhone, which is I set up like next to the modular normally. Um, right now I use it to film. Um, but that way I can just do some uti utility stuff in Ableton. But uh, for this video, I wanted to do a little bit, I don't know, sort of a performance thingy. Uh, <laughs> this makes it a little bit silly, but at least then we have like a sound example. So. Um, what I did is we have the module, um, this task, that's the module that we actually downloaded. And um, then I'm opening um, with the CV2, I'm opening the webcam. And um, I basically have this recognizer right here, which is going to recognize the, the different gestures. And based on that, it's going to launch a different function. Uh, that's all nice. One thing that was challenging with this project is to make it run in time. So what I'm doing is uh, with the Ableton OSC, we can actually request a beat from Ableton. We can request a timing. Um, we can see that right here. And so this function, when it receives a beat, uh, then it, it uh, this function triggers and this is in combination with the gesture recognizer for example if i do this victory sign thing as they call it we need to um we have that and then we need to wait for a certain beat to appear before um before we actually want to trigger the action so let's see if we can run this right and you can hear something in Ableton because those are the actual functions. So let's go over the different gesture functions um, to see what they do. So this victory action, what it does is it sends a message to uh, a device to set the parameters of the device. I've shown this a little bit before. Um, what this one will do is I have a drum loop right here and it has a device rack on there. And if I use this gesture, you can see that it switches on and then it starts to randomly uh, change values. 
this function gets triggered over and over every time it hits a beat as long as you have the, the gesture held up. Um, and that's the same uh, for the other ones with a few exceptions. So for the thumb up uh, gesture, I'm using the, um, I'm just muting certain tracks. So let's actually play this and listen to that. <laughs> So it just um, un or it unmutes these tracks or it solos these tracks. I guess unmutes it and then mutes another one. Um, and then as soon as you remove the gesture, it should stop doing that. Uh, then we have the pointing up, which um, in our case it will launch this clip. Um, and this clip has just an arpeggiator and some modulation chords. We can take a look at that as well. <laughs> So that's fun. Um, then we have the open palm action. This one uh, takes our drum loop and it starts to randomly modulate the pitch parameter there, which uh, let's just solo the drum loop for a second. Uh, so that's one of my favorites. And um, then we have the closed fist action. And with this one, I'm actually doing a little bit more of a, a special thing. The first thing I'm doing is I'm soloing this track. So as soon as I have a closed fist, we should see uh, that track soloing. Um, but then I'm also tracking the X and Y position of, um, of the wrist, actually. And because of that, I can move my hand up and down and open and close a filter, for example. Um, so this track, it is in, uh, in Serum, and I have the mod wheel there set up to open this filter and to change these parameters a little bit. So if I do this gesture and I play... One thing you, you can do with this is like if you take your hand out of the frame, this will be the new filter position. So um, as a demonstration. So you can see that the mod wheel stays up in this case. So I don't know how, how far we should go into the code for this. Um, it's a little bit complex. I have uploaded it here. Um, it's on uh, my website, my new website actually, and you can find it under resources. Um, if you create a free account, it's explained here how the project works and you can download the code right there. Um, but to go over it, Let's go over it a little bit. So um, we have our OSC stuff because Ableton OSC obviously uses an OSC um, protocol to send data to Ableton. This will only work if it's uh, set up in your um, section right here. So uh, da, da, da. Ableton OSC there in slot six. Um, so this is how we connect to Ableton using an OSC server uh, or OSC port. Then um, for the the a gesture we need to use a threading because it needs to run on a different thread to not stop the execution otherwise um, if something is happening uh, and it goes like the webcam that we see it is a loop and we want that loop to continue even though we do other stuff otherwise the webcam would freeze the whole time um, so we're using um, multi-threading for that then we have the functions that trigger on certain um, actions and then when the when there's no gesture uh, it will just reset everything um, and here we map the, the gestures to the functions. Then this send mod uh, function, this gets, um, this gets triggered only when this uh, closed fist gesture is active, as you can see. Um, um, after that, it will take the value, which it will get from uh, here. It gets the wrist.y value. So um, these are the actual points that you can uh, extract from this. So for example, hand landmarks zero is the wrist, um, one, two, three, etc. are the um, other, other fingers and other joints. You can check this link here for the documentation on that. So we use that and we send that value to the mod 
um, but first we convert it to a range between 0 and 127. By default, the range is uh, 0 to 1, uh, so we want to use a regular MIDI range. And then we can we can do uh, whatever we want with that. I showed this in the other video, um, another video that's called um, "Controlling Ableton with a Webcam" or something. It's a, it's a very similar project. So um, we have that, and then um, below here, and this was the tricky part. We have the the actual beat messages. So we want things to be in sync, and for that, what we do is we send we first tell Ableton to send us beat information. So we say, hey, we want to listen to your beats, and then um, we map that using a dispatcher. We map that to our unbeat received function, and our unbeat received function it's it's takes a look whether there's a gesture. If there is a gesture, um, it will set that flag to true. And then if it also receives a beat, then it will launch the function. So uh, that should ensure that the execu execution of the function is always um, in time. And that's basically, that's, that's, the, um, that's the gist of it. That's the whole project. And below here, of course, we have our, our webcam loop. Um, so, so remember, these, these are just pictures actually that is recognizing. So we're converting our, um, we're using like individual frames of our webcam, then we convert them to RGB for media pipe, and then we run the recognition uh, model, um, and then here we we show that. And the nice thing with this, is like if I do this live, um, I change to my uh, so this here we open the webcam. Um, and zero is my built-in webcam on my laptop, but if I go to one and I have my iPhone connected um, and I rerun this, you can actually see the score from, uh, you can see the view from the, from the iPhone. So yeah, I hope this can be useful to someone. Like I said, like the way I have it right now is, of course, it's way too specific, right? This is not, so it's it's muting and soloing different texts and, and changing some parameters, which is fun to play around with, but it's not really, if you do things differently, those, those tracks will not work. If you have a different Ableton project, it would be, um, you would have to change these. So uh, this is why I use it for, for utility stuff, um, controlling Ableton, scrolling down, scrolling up, opening the browser. All of that, that Ableton actions, the things you do there is um, stuff you can find in the Ableton OSC, um, which I showed before. It's, it's a simple matter of getting this address, setting the parameters. So for example, if you want to get the color of a certain track, you give it the track idea, and then it, re it returns the track idea and the, and the color. Um, if you want to do another example, um, let's say you want to control a device, you can first get the number of parameters and then you can uh, set the number of parameters as well. There's, there's uh, many things we can do with that, including this, this uh, getting a beat. Um, those are called uh, viewers. Um, uh, let's see if we can actually get beat. Can we find this? Yeah, so this is how that works. So you get a, a beat and we can use this in place of Ableton Link. So with Ableton Link, as you might know, we can we can sync to other software. Um, and I was messing around with that first and I got that to work, but it can actually be way simpler uh, just using this Ableton OSC and letting Ableton tell you when there is a new beat. And based on that, you can do stuff. So like I said, all of that can be um, found here on my beautiful new website, which is of course where I'm, I'm trying to get you at. Uh, and there you can download the code if you are interested. So thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope to see you in another video.